Hello, my name is Joanne Buell and I am one of three healthcare consultants and certified MAT trainers here at Child Care Council. I will serve as your facilitator for this three-part presentation on emergency care and emergency medication administration for children with severe asthma and or anaphylaxis. Our hope is that you will use this presentation as a go-to resource in preparing to give emergency care to children who have a potential life-threatening condition. Each part of the series can concentrates on one important aspect of emergency care. This presentation is the second in our three-part series. The purpose of this video presentation is to provide you with a go-to resource on preparing for the life-threatening emergency of a severe asthma episode. The Office of Children and Family Services, or OCFS, approved regulations that permit child care programs to keep on site the emergency medications for this emergency situation even if the program is not medication approved. The following slides will give you an overview of the asthma condition, the required paperwork, and a demonstration of the proper administration of these medications. Asthma is a chronic inflammatory disease of the lungs. Episodes can be mild, moderate, to life-threatening. The airway becomes sensitive and reacts to triggers. Triggers can be anything that causes the lining of the airway to swell, produce excess mucus, and cause tightening of the airway muscles. Examples of triggers are viruses that cause respiratory infections. Even mild colds can trigger an asthma episode. Tobacco or wood-burning smoke, allergies to pet dander, dust mites, pollens and foods, strong smells such as perfume or room fresheners, exercise, weather changes, and emotions, among others. Be aware of each child's triggers. Assisting the child in avoiding his or her triggers is essential to prevent an asthma episode. Children with life-threatening asthma episodes will have varying symptoms, but usually start with agitation, fear, fatigue, and panic as the condition worsens. Common symptoms during a severe asthma episode are difficulty breathing or breathing quickly, straining of the neck and chest muscles and pushing out of the chest seen especially in infants in an effort to breathe. Difficulty speaking, chest tightness, persistent coughing, and or wheezing, which is a tight musical sounding noise. These are all often seen. Children with asthma can use controller medicines to keep their asthma from flaring. However, in the event of a severe asthma episode, it is absolutely imperative that the child's rescue medication be quickly and accurately administered. Rescue medicine can be administered in an inhaler, or solution used in a nebulizer machine, which is permitted by regulations to be in child care programs. What do you need to be prepared for a severe asthma episode? An avoidance plan. Know and avoid or minimize the risk of exposing the child to his or her triggers by modifying the environment. Prepare for an asthma episode. Choose a medication storage area close to the child that is out of reach of the children, but that you can get to quickly. Your emergency bag or first aid kit works well. Check the expiration dates on the medication and medication consent form regularly. And keep these forms with your emergency medication. Have a dedicated bag of crayons, paper, and books set aside for the other children to use while you attend to the distressed child. Review the individual health care plan frequently, especially the asthma action plan. Generally, it includes identifying that the asthma symptoms are occurring, keeping the child and yourself calm and remove the child from the triggers if indicated, administer the medication, call the parent and call 911 if the symptoms worsen or no improvement is seen within 10 minutes despite administering the asthma medication. Observe the child until the parent or the first responders arrive. Lastly, practice your asthma action plan from the individual health care plan and review and practice the administration of asthma medication instructions. Have emergency action plan drills with all the children in the program so everyone knows what to do if an asthma episode occurs. To administer emergency medication, the child caregiver must be certain they are giving the correct dose of the correct medication to the correct child at the correct time by the correct route. To be sure, the child caregiver must be certain both the medication label and the written medication consent form have the same information. This matching of information on the medication label and the medication consent form from the health care provider is called matching the five rights. 
Match the information twice before giving the medicine and once after giving the medicine. In emergency situations, the first matching of the five rights is done when you accept the medication and paperwork from the parent and every time you practice your emergency action plan. Remember the correct time is when you see asthma symptoms, but keep an eye on the clock time also. You will need to document the time you gave the medicine on the administration of medication log. The second time you match the five rights is just before you administer the medication. After giving the medication, you will check the five rights the third and last time. You will document the medication administered on the OCFS log of medication administration form or on the bottom of the combined medication consent with administration log form. This is how caring for a child having an asthma episode and administering rescue medication might look in your program. Hi, I'm Joanne Buell. At this point in our presentation, I'd like to show you how taking care of a child with an asthma episode might look in your program. I'd like to introduce Michelle Lewis. Michelle Lewis is a three-year-old in my program. She does have asthma, and when her mom came, she asked, when she enrolled her, she asked me if I could hold on to some albuterol for her in case she has an asthma episode, which I did. And she did bring me the um, information that I needed. She and I, the mom and I, filled out the individual health care plan for a child with special health care needs. And um, she showed me what, uh, told me what her signs and symptoms are of an asthma episode, which are um, breathing faster, complaints of chest tightness, and a persistent cough, particularly those three. She also said that her uh, triggers are respiratory infections. Anytime she gets a cold, she tends to have an asthma episode and when the weather changes. So I have that and she also brought the medication um, with the consent form. And for the purpose of this demonstration, just because it's easier, we're going to use the medication consent form and log combined. Um, so she had the physician fill out the top part with the instructions that um, tell me what to do and how to um, how much of the medicine I am to give and she signed it and I signed it so um, I also put in my um, bag that I hold all of her emergency medicine in a copy of the blue card with the parent permission to give emergency care in the ambulance or the hospital should that be needed now for um, emergency asthma rescue medication, it can come in different forms. One, it can come as a, a liquid, in which case you would use a nebulizer machine to um, help the liquid turn into a mist. The compressor does that part for you. You can also administer emergency asthma medication using an MDI or a meter dose inhaler. You can use this alone or you can use it with a tool called a spacer. The spacer is provided by the parent. It has the child's first and last name on it. It can come with a mask or not. This tool is to be used only for that one child. It's very child specific and it cannot be shared. At this point I will um, break this up into a couple of scenarios so that you can see how we could use each of these forms to give emergency medication to Michelle. In this scenario, we have Michelle Lewis who has been complaining that her chest is starting to hurt a little bit. I can see that she's breathing a little bit um, more quickly and with a little bit more difficulty. And she is not playing with, the, with her friends here at the program, which is very unlike her. So I suspect that she is having an asthma episode. I'm going to look at the individual health care plan, at the symptoms that I'm supposed to be looking for, and I am noticing them. She is breathing faster and with some difficulty. She is complaining of chest tightness, and she does have a little bit of a cough that's been persistent through most of the day. She does have a cold, and we have been outside this morning, and the weather is changing, so that is also her triggers. So I do know that I'm going to be giving her medication. Her medication consent form says that Michelle Lewis needs one vial 
of um, albuterol sulfate in a nebulizer. So I'm going to get that set up. But in the meantime, I'm going to ask the other children to get the care bag, which has the crayons and the paper and some books for them to, um, to have these activities while I'm taking care of Michelle. They're going to be sitting over there at the table so I can observe them and supervise them while I'm taking care of Michelle. I am going to be using the nebulizer. And again, this is just a compressor that takes the liquid that's in this vial and um, turns it into a mist that allows the medication to get deeper into the lungs and to help um, open them up so that she can breathe better. The first thing I need to do, though, is to make sure that I have the right medication. So I'm going to take the medication consent form and the box with the medication label and match my five rights. The label says Michelle Lewis. My consent form says Michelle Lewis. The label says uh, albuterol sulfate. My consent form says albuterol sulfate. The dose on my consent form says one vial. It says uh, inhale one vial. It says through a nebulizer on my consent form via a nebulizer on my consent, on my label. So, um, and the, it says to use as needed on my label, and on my consent form it says with chest tightness, difficulty breathing, which are the symptoms. So I know it's the correct time, the correct medicine, the correct child, the correct dose, the correct time. The parts of the nebulizer that I'll be using, and they um, all look different, but the main components are going to be the cup, the insert, which is where the medicine is, so I would just um, twist off the top and empty the vial, one vial into the cup here. Insert the center part and lock it down. And I am going to take the tubing. Now the tubing, the cup, the insert, and the mask are child specific. We can't share those, but with parent permission you can share the nebulizer. On my nebulizer, this particular one has a, a slot for air, and that's where the one end of the tubing will connect. Uh, all nebulizers have instructions, so you might want to look at them because they all can be a little bit different. The other end of the tubing will go on the cup. This particular cup has a nub at the bottom that um, connects. And then we have a mask. I'm going to put that on Michelle. And I try very hard to make sure that this mask fits well, especially around the bridge of the nose so that the medicine doesn't go into her eyes. Now, a real child will hold this, of course. We try not to have her cry. If um, they're crying, then the breathing is not um, optimal to get the medication into the lungs. But you can talk and sing um, with her while she's having her treatment. I'm going to be looking at the other children, make sure that they're okay, and I'll be calling the mom while we're given the treatment to let her know what's going on. And uh, this is how it will look. <laughs> After about 10 minutes, the treatment should be done. While I'm waiting for the mom to come, I'm watching the other children and I'm observing uh, Michelle, I am going to document the date, the dose, the time, my signature, and the symptoms that I saw that prompted me to give Michelle her medication. As you're documenting, remember this is the perfect time to match your five rights the third and last time. If her symptoms do not improve or if um, they get worse despite having given her her medication, I will be calling 911. If you have any questions, please feel free to call Child Care Council Health Care Consultants. We'd be happy to answer any questions and I hope this was helpful. Another scenario you might find is a child having an asthma episode will be asked to be using uh, a uh, an inhaler. So Michelle, I noticed again, is having some difficulty breathing. She has chest tightness, 
and her special uh, individual health care plan said that that's her symptoms for having an asthma episode and that her triggers are respiratory cold and weather changes both that are occurring and if that is to occur her action plan is to give her two puffs from her inhaler so I'm going to do this there's no spacer involved so I'm going to take um, my consent form and I'm going to match my five rights Michelle Lewis, Michelle Lewis. My label says Ventolin Albuterol. My consent form says Ventolin Albuterol. It says two pops by mouth for chest tightness and persistent cough and difficulty breathing, all of them that she is showing. It says the same on the label. I'm going to take the meter dose inhaler. I'm going to shake it so that I can mix the propellant and the medicine so it works properly. I'm going to take off the cap and I'm going to look to make sure that the hole that the medicine comes out is clear and there's no um, residue that might be blocking it. I'm going to ask Michelle to take a breath in and then blow it out. I'm going to tilt her head back a little bit. Let me demonstrate with the doll. I'm going to put it into her mouth, have her lips go around it, and simultaneously as she takes a breath in, I'm going to press down on the um, inhaler. Breathe in. Hold your breath. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Blow out. Because the instructions say to give two puffs, I'm going to wait one minute, and then I will do it again. Tilting the head back slightly, I'm going to ask her to take a breath in and blow it out. I'm going to insert the inhaler, and I'm going to ask her to take a deep and slow breath in through the mouth as I press the inhaler. Hold your breath. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Relax. I will call the mom and let her know that I gave the inhaler. The children have gotten their care bag out and are um, using the books and the crayons and the uh, paper and, and uh, making crafts and drawings for Michelle. And while I wait for the mom, I'm going to document the date, the time, the dose, my signature, and the reason I gave the medication, the signs of the shortness of breath, the chest tightness, difficulty breathing, on the consent form. Remember that this is the best time to match your five rights the third and last time. You could also use the OCFS 7002 consent form, and then you'd have to document on the OCFS 7004 log of uh, medication administration. So that's how we would use an inhaler alone. The other way we could do it is um, using the inhaler with a spacer. So in that event, again, Michelle Lewis is having uh, persistent coughing, she's having chest tightness and difficulty breathing. That again is um, on her individual health care plan and the action plan says to give her an uh, inhaler with spacer. Five rights, Michelle Lewis, Michelle Lewis, Venal and Albuterol, Venal and Albuterol, two puffs, two puffs, by mouth with spacer, by mouth with spacer. And shake, check the hole is clear, and then the spacer has a hole in the back. We connect the inhaler to the spacer, and because Michelle is so young, she has her own uh, mask as well. I'm going to ask 
Michelle to take a breath in and blow it out. I'm going to place the mask over her nose and her mouth. And then I'm going to ask you to take a breath in as I press down the in, um, inhaler. Breathe in. Hold your breath. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Breathe out. Breathe in. That's one full breath. Breathe out. Breathe in. That's two full breaths. Breathe out. Breathe in. That's three full breaths, which should be enough to have emptied all the medication out of the spacer. Because it says to give two breaths, I'm going to wait one minute and we'll do it again. Breathe out. Actually, what we probably should do is just shake this again. Breathe out. Take a breath in. I press down down the inhaler. Hold your breath. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Breathe out. Breathe in. One full breath. Breathe out. Breathe in. Two full breaths. Breathe out. Breathe in. Three full breaths. Enough to empty the medicine out of the uh, spacer. And now we relax. Now, Mom, watch the other children as they um, do their activities. And if there still d is difficulty breathing or um, persistent coughing or everything that I've been seeing before gets worse, I will call 911. I'm going to document the date, dose, time, signature, and the reason why I gave the medicine. Remember that this is the best time to match your five rights the third and last time. And that should be all that you need to do to help this child having an asthma episode. Thank you for watching. Here are some resources on asthma and asthma medications. The primary purpose of this three-part series of video presentations is to serve as a resource for you to know the regulations and required paperwork in order to accept emergency medication for children having a severe asthma episode or anaphylactic reaction, which is shown in part one. To have an understanding of these two life-threatening conditions and to watch a demonstration on how to administer the emergency medication properly using the required paperwork and procedures are part of our part two and part three series. The other video presentations our video part one, which outlines the regulations and required paperwork that must be on site before accepting emergency medication for children with these life-threatening conditions, especially if the program is not uh, approved to give medications. Part three outlines the care of a child having a severe allergic reaction or anaphylaxis and the proper technique for administering of the epinephrine auto-injector medication. I encourage you to watch these short presentations often so that you will know what OCFS requires for you to be able to accept emergency medication in your program and safely care for children at risk of a severe asthma episode or anaphylaxis. Thank you for watching.